Amen. You may be seated.
But it is unclean for anyone who thinks it unclean. If your brother and sister is being injured by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. Do not let what you eat cause the ruin of one for whom Christ died. So do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not food or drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The one who serves Christ is acceptable to God and has human approval. Let us then pursue what makes for peace and for mutual ability. May God have God's blessings on the reading of the word. I've given you this analogy before, but it fits this passage so perfectly that when I was at Indiana University, the administration and the professors, they didn't want me to learn all the information that was contained in that university. I wasn't expected to know everything about biology and chemistry and astrology and astronomy and law and arts and education and business and all the fields of study that IU offered. I was only asked to learn one. But I often wondered, walking on the campus of Indiana University, what it would be like to know all that information. Indiana University has a library that has 12 floors, nothing but information, books, microfish. And I always thought, what a, what a great honor it would be to know every piece of information in that library, but I'd have to spend the rest of my life there. And so you realize, or you should if you're well educated and informed, that you don't know it all about everything in life when you graduate from college. You know a little bit about a certain subject. That's it. The old chair doctor who had a graduate degree down in Markleville said, a bachelor's degree just enables you to be able to ask a good question. And other than that, it's not really good for a whole lot. But you know, we get to religion, and for some reason we think <clears throat> as human beings that we know it all. That we know the proper way to worship God, pray to God, serve God, all that, and just ask us and we'll tell you. I find this also true on how we deal with each other with this pandemic. We have people passing judgment on other people because they're wearing a mask. Or we have people passing judgment on other people because oh, they're not wearing a mask. Judgment, judgment, judgment. It's the 21st century. I've come to an understanding that each one of us has a unique journey with this great God. My journey is not like any of yours, and none of yours is like any of the other of yours or mine. And I think that is so cool that each one of us has our own unique walk with our Heavenly Father. I learned this through a Bible study. That people perceive God in different ways than I did. And trying to follow Holy Scripture's demand, instead of passing judgment on them people, Try to understand why their differences in how they understood God were different from mine. And that's where I understood that their journey is different. 
No two people have the same conception of God. Just as no two people have the same opinion towards another human being. There's probably, what, 50 people in this room today? Probably 50 different opinions about me in this room. And it's the same with God. So we formed as human beings denominations. Thinking that if we could get together with a group, we could all come to the same mutual understanding of who this God is. And then we would be in the right and everybody else would be in the wrong. And yet I see denominations the same way I see classifications of education on a college campus. We know a portion of that God. We see only a portion of that God. And we can only comprehend a portion of that God. Are we really going to claim that we worship God better or more fully than the folks on the other side of town? Or the folks just down the street? Or those Catholics that we all want to bad mouth and despise and hate? Do we really believe that? Do we really believe that we know all the information about COVID-19 and we can pass judgment on whether you're observing social standards or not? Going back to Paul's passage, I never really had a problem with food as far as what was holy and unholy. Was raised that way in my own house. The only thing I knew wasn't holy was liver and onions. <laughs> Just because of the way it smelled. I could smell it two blocks from home. I knew mom was cooking liver and onions. And the dog ate well that night. I do understand that the Lord set aside a day from the week to be the Sabbath. And personally, I hate Mondays. Always have, since I was a kid. But if you believe differently, that doesn't make you wrong and me right, or you right and me wrong. That's what Paul's saying in this passage. If you want to keep a kosher kitchen, and that works for you, praise God. And if you don't, then praise God as well. Who are we? Who are we to pass judgment on someone else? In my opinion, there is only one person who has the right to pass judgment. And if he did pass judgment, the way we pass judgment, we'd be in a world of trouble, brothers and sisters. Christ wouldn't have went to the cross for us. He would have said, God, why should I die for them? He might have used other words. Why should I die for those who won't even come in and be a part of my God? Why should I die for those who are too busy judging me and everyone else because they think their discharge doesn't stink? You know what I mean. Paul makes the case that God has done all this and we are recipients of his blessings. And then he rotates into the notion that whether we live or whether we die, we are gods. And each one of us are accountable to him. No one else. Him. So, if some of us doesn't want to commune every Sunday, does that mean God will judge them harshly? If those want to, if people in this world want to consult other religions 
and look else other ways to find the spiritual truth, God, who are we to pass judgment? What I learned was that what I do works for me. And really that's as far as it goes. If it doesn't work for you, then I want you to go and find what way does work for you. I don't want to judge you and say that you're less than me because you've chosen a different way. Paul says, don't judge one another, but resolve instead to put a stumbling, to never put a stumbling block or a hindrance in the way of another. And then he goes on to say, if what you're doing injures someone else, then you're no longer walking in love. This is how Paul tried to live. This is how Billy Graham tried to live. This is how Martin Luther King Jr. tried to live. This is how Mother Teresa Lott tried to live. Not passing judgments, not talking about how great they are, how full of faith in God's spirit they are. They would use examples of other individuals for that. Instead, they walked humbly with their God. They understood their own shortcomings and faults and sins. They understood that their existence was totally dependent upon God's grace. Because of that, they were in no position to pass judgment. Sherry and I spent some time on Mackinac City, Mackinac Island. We saw some people wearing masks. We saw some people that didn't. We went to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. No one was wearing a mask in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And then we went to McCormick State Park, and everybody was wearing a mask, even outside. <coughs> it wasn't ours to pass judgment of whether these people were stupid, or crazy, or endangering us. We did what we felt was best for us during that time, and let everybody else be themselves. And we experienced a good time because of it. If there's one thing that the kingdom of God is not, it is not about judgment. Jesus said in the Sermon of the Mount, judge not, and you won't be judged. And yet it is one of the hardest things for us humans to do, is to stay away from passing judgment. Whether it's on our politicians, or our sports figures, or our Hollywood people, or our music famous people, or other Christians. We are such, we have this tendency. Oh, did you hear about the doing this and such and such and such and Bad mouthing one another. And my, my friends, it's not a good witness to Jesus Christ. <clears throat> In fact, it's probably what keeps those outside these walls to never come in. Because they look at us and they say, look at them hypocrites. I've heard it. And you have to. And if the shoe fits, what else are we to do? Christ didn't judge the Samaritan woman. He didn't judge the woman committed in adultery. Caught in committing adultery? The lepers? He didn't even judge point as Pilate or King Herod or the people that nailed him to the cross. Instead, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I understand that I will never know God fully. So who am I to criticize anyone else pursuing the superior being that we call God in some other way? Like it's only my way or the highway. 
like God has blessed me with, you know, the enlightenment that only I know God better than everybody else. That's hypocritical. Instead, I keep focusing on this line that he says in here that each of us will be accountable to God. And that keeps me humble. Because I realize that when that day comes, there's going to be some things I'm going to have to account for. Those times when I pass judgment on someone else. Those times when I wasn't there with a helping hand, but walked by and scoffed at another one of God's children. times when I wasn't going to let my heart open up in friendship and Christian love because I'm a little bad. No, when I remember that I'm accountable to God, that makes me feel about that big. And it also makes me feel like my understanding of this God that maintains the universe knows a little bit more than me. And that I only understand him in part. There's nothing wrong with understanding God in part. That's better than nothing. Where the danger comes is when we think we got it all. Think we know it all. Because when that mindset takes over, that's when judgment I used to know a human being They used to say all the time if the world would just behave according to me it'd all be great well yeah it would if we all behaved according to what you wanted us to do well, that yeah the world would be great but that's not how the world operates is it but I also used to know a human being used to say to me all the time, what do I know, son? I'm just a servant. I'm just here doing what the creator of life is telling me to do. And what others do, well, that's their journey. That's their path. That's their own unique travel of life. Not yours. Yours is yours. Theirs is theirs. Because each of us, one day, will be accountable to God. I thank God that God sent His Son into this world to show us grace and show us His love. And that He left behind a testimony so that maybe one day we, the children of God, could live like His Son and not pass judgment. But to walk our own journey of faith and understand that it's just ours, just mine, just yours, not everybody else's. And the world doesn't have to conform to our ways in order to be right. We have to conform to God's way to be right. When are we going to do that? When we, like Christ, give up our will and say it's all about your will. Those are the wonderful words of life and beauty that sustain you, maintain you, and will ultimately redeem you when you stand in that judgment seat before God. And then maybe we will know it all. And we can brag in heaven to each other about all this wealth of knowledge that we have. But until then, we only know a portion. Let us walk in that knowledge and keep these wonderful words of life with us. Let us stand and sing.